Good morning. Come on in. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Happy Bank Holiday Monday. Well, you may be in America, in which case, happy Memorial Day. Today is a special occasion in, um, in the States as well. So do come in. And we're going to do some colouring today because we are in Camelot. Is anybody there apart from me? Hey, Paul, can you hear me okay? I think that we may be a smaller group today because it's a holiday, but that's fine. That's fine. The important people are here. There you go. So come on in. Good morning, Anya. Lovely to have your company. Welcome. Where are you, Anya? Where are you, love? I'd love to know where you are. Redditch in Worcester. You see, it's lovely. Good morning, Catherine. Hey, Jane, Yvonne. Great to have your company. And in they come. And if Paul could just let me know that the volume is good, then we can crack on. The sun's shining. It's a glorious day. And this is a great way. What a, what a great way to start your day. Hey, hanging out with a few friends. A little bit of yoga for the mind, a bit of colouring, a bit of doodling. Doesn't get better than that, hey? Yeah. Sound is good. Thank you, Paul. There you go. Our friend Paul Church is in the building with you. So if you have any questions, then he's the man to ask because he knows a lot more about most things than I do. <laughs> have you got your cup of tea? You rock. Lovely cup of tea. And let's just wait for a couple of people to get in. I'll tell you what you do need today, just in case you're wondering. Colouring pencils. We're going to do a bit of colouring today. So whether you've got the pergoliners or whether you've got the polychromos, either or. Any, any colouring pencils to do. You don't, it's not like you, you can't join in just because you haven't got the right colouring pencils. No. You can pick your colours. You can pick your pencils. What's important is that we all hang out together. Hey, and who's done a, some gardening? I just saw someone flash through. Judith Toppen's done an hour's gardening already. Wow, being productive, Judith's always good to know. Good to hear and good to know. I spent the last hour um, figuring out what we're doing. <laughs> I haven't, I've been potter, potter, pottery, pottery. I've just been potting away all weekend. I've had to open the windows because the kiln is in the garage underneath me. And um, I don't know, it smells a bit weird. The, it's stopped now, you know, the, the, it got up to that 12.50 and now it's coming down again. The kiln I'm talking about. Um, but I don't know what whether it's the oxides that I use this time, but it smells different to usual. <laughs> learning, learning, learning. So God knows what's going to happen when I open that door, but I can't open it for another 24 hours yet. Patience is a virtue. Uh, now let's have a look. Camelot, are you ready? You just need to, um, to dig out your pencils, okay? And we'll have a look. Shall we have a little recap of what we've been doing? No rush, no rush. We're going to mum and dad's afterwards. So this is a nice day off for me. Yeah, go and see my parents and uh, hang out with them. It should be lovely. And what about you? Have you got a good day planned? Hey, did your day start well? Or did your day not start well? You know, the thing about days, it's only 10 o'clock. There's no reason you can't start your day over. If you got out of bed on the wrong side or you're feeling a little unhappy or anxious, you know, you could say, right, OK, I'm not going to waste this day. I'm not going to say, oh, well, it all went wrong as soon as I got out of bed. So that's the whole day blown. No, it's not. It's only 10 o'clock. You haven't even had your breakfast yet. <laughs> you could just say, right, that's it. Park that little flip. You know, sometimes you have a little hiccup, don't you? Wake up, have a little Barney or something like that. Or even a little washing machine head going on. And so we hang out together. We'll do some colouring in. Okay, um, bit of zen, bit of doodling, bit of relaxing. And then you start your day again. There is no rule that says just because it started out badly, it has to continue badly. Oh, well, that's it. The whole Monday's blown. Not at all. Not at all. Use this hour now 
to just redirect your thinking. I know how it is, you know, and this bank holiday, nobody, you don't know, can I go out? Can't I go out? Should I go out? I don't want to go out. They're saying I can. And you're going, and everyone's going to Portugal. I don't want to go to Portugal. <laughs> is there something wrong with me? Why don't I want to go to Portugal? Well, I don't want to go to Portugal either. So that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine right come on let's get started or this hour will be over and we won't even have got the pencils out so takes off those glasses puts those ones on God, <laughs> i just put these on and there's like a film of smear and she wonders why she can't see much <laughs> eyesight is crucial isn't it <laughs> It really is. Oh, that's better. Right, come on then. Crack on, crack on, Grey. Okay, tracing. Let's have a quick recap so you remember where we were. And if you're new to the shack, we um, we went to Camelot on the Shack Shack bus. What does Shack stand for? Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft, which is what we've been doing. So we started, we went to Camelot and we... Um, we used a piece of tracing paper to draw our jousters. And then we did our jousting party, the royal party with the king and queen. And we did some nice patterns around the edge, didn't we? And then we transferred it, we inked it. Here we go. Uh, well, I inked it onto a piece of that lovely um, buff paper. Let me put this somewhere. Do you know I haven't even cleared up from Friday yet? You know I was on the telly on Friday with those lovely um, lino cut stamps, which reminds me, lino cut stamps. I'll say it now just in case I forget. Where are they? Here they are. On Wednesday evening this week, moment of clarity, I'm doing another craft along. So if you want to join in or you just want to hang out with us and, and have a bit of company, whichever, but we're going to be using these, um, these lino cut stamps on Wednesday evening, Facebook Live, uh, 7 o'clock. You, me, and Paul. <laughs> okay? So we already did have a session with this, didn't we, a couple of weeks ago, and I said we'd have another go. So don't forget, put it in your diary, Wednesday this week, uh, Paul will write it up for you, so if you want to write it down. But it's seven o'clock this week, okay? Right, so let's have a look at Camelot. Um, yeah, so I've got uh, everything around me. I'm still surrounded by all the artwork from Friday because I just shut the door on it and had a weekend off. I thought, I'm going to join the rest of the nation <laughs> just for once. Right, so what we've done now is we've transferred it didn't we? That's why we did it on tracing paper. So we flipped it, transferred it, penned it. What pens did we use in case you're wondering? There's a whole playlist on YouTube. Um, Paul, perhaps you'd be kind enough just to bring up the link because this is day seven on Camelot. I mean, it sounds like we've been here forever, but because we only, we only hang out on Mondays and Wednesdays together doing this, it takes as long as it takes. And at the end of the day, it's not a it's not a race, is it? And Camelot, what Camelot's affording us is a brilliant vehicle, a, a lovely arty vehicle for tr trying out all different things. So, so this is the main act. But if you remember, we did a little detour, and we did the the swirls, didn't we? They came out lovely. So we did the swirls. I've seen loads of these on Facebook Live, and then we had. Uh, we tried some other swirls. Do you remember? We, when did we do that? Last Wednesday. That was pretty cool. We did all these swirls as well. So if you want to look up how to do these, we had a doodle session doing all this, didn't we? Do you remember? That's pretty cool. I think I've got one left that we're going to, that we'll do as well. But not today. I think today we'll crack on with the colouring. So that's the thing, is that the... Um, this this tapestry that we're that we're doodling and colouring together, we're learning so much along the way. I mean, it seems like weeks ago we did the jousters, 
Um, and today I thought it would be nice to start doing a little bit of colouring. Hey, wait, my chair's just gone weird again. <laughs> oh, dear. Either lose weight or get a new chair, Grey. Those are your options. So let's have a look at the colouring pencils that we're going to use before we come in tighter. I decided... I decided to go with red and orange. I don't know. I think I thought about medieval. I was going to go with blue. And I thought, I'm always doing blue. I always go blue, 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 blue. Because I thought blue and red would be quite good. You know, British thing. Um, and then I thought, no, I'm going to go with red and orange. Something completely different. Spen España. <laughs> so you can go with any colours you fancy. But what we need is two contrasting colours, so you do anything you like, pick your favourites. Jane Telford, you can go pink, <laughs> pick whatever you fancy. And then we just need a couple of shades of that colour, those colours, okay? So don't worry about doing orange and, orange and red like me, do whatever you fancy. For the sake of argument, though, because I know a lot of you, and I do understand it totally. God, these glasses. Um, sometimes it's just less uh, strenuous to just be told, do this. You know, it takes the thinking out of it. Some of you want to do your own, put your own spin on it, and others of you want to know exactly what I'm doing because you don't want to have to make those decisions. It's all too much and I get that too. A lot of things are way too much at the moment, aren't they? I know, you're not alone. Oh, you're not alone. So I'm gonna tell you which colors I've used and then you can decide. I've got two options. So we've got the Faber-Castell pencils, okay? So let's have a look here. And the ones that I've used, I went with, no, I need my other glasses on again. God, Barbara Gray. Right, so I used, uh, I think I went with this this one here, 109. This is the, I've got so many different oranges and yellows in the tin. So I went with the 109. And then the red one that I went with was the scarlet one. There it is, deep scarlet, because I thought that would be nice. Yeah. So those are my two, if you like. And then I probably need, I need um, a darker one of the reds as well. So I'm going to go with two, 217. It's called cadmium red, mid, middle cadmium red. So I've got an orangey colour and then I've got a red and a dark red. Yeah. So I probably ought to take, oh, that looks a little bit orangey. What do I think? What's this one? Uh, one, one, one. Well, well, I'm going to take all of these. <laughs> so I've got oranges and I've got reds. That will do. And just in case, I think I may want to try a green. See, so what I did was to de to decide which colours, I took a piece of the same paper that you're working on. So regardless of what paper it is you're, you're actually colouring on, to, you've got to try the colours out. I know I'm teaching you to suck eggs here, but you do need to try the colours out on the same colour that you're working on. Because these on white card, for example, will look very different, or on cream, will look very different to the buff, won't they? So, so I was looking at the different greens as well. You see, I've already done a little bit of looking, and I thought that this kind of, this one was rather nice, juniper. It's just got a lovely it's not olive, it's, it's got a bit more of a blue in it. So I thought I'd use that one as well. And then we've got our greys and what have you. So those are the ones that I'm going to take out because we're going to use them for a few days now. It's going to take long. Oh, and while we're here, we need a couple of the greys. Yeah, I've already picked my greys. I've got a, I've got a little selection of greys here just because. But they're in this section here. Or remember we, we put together a a set of um, 12 colours, in case you went with the Perga liners, we put together a set of 12 
um, greys and beiges and whites and all those weird colours that are not in here, unfortunately. So we thought, right, well, we'll get some polychromo sorted out. They're beautiful. And then you can use those. But now, without wanting to make this more complicated than it needs to be, I'm going to go with the B pencils. I'm going to take the number nine. This is what I this is what I would recommend if you want to go oranges and reds. Number eleven, and then the number this one here is good. It's got a kind of a reddy browny color. Thirteen, nine, eleven, and thirteen. Oh, and then you want a white one as well. You need the white. Right, that'll do. And there's a nice green in here as well, which is equivalent B6. The six one's good. So I'll take that one as well. Okay, so there are your colours. So whichever family, and of course you can mix them up, can't you? So if you prefer the orange from there or the red from there, you pick you pick your your colours. They work. They're the same sort of family, just different manufacturers and price. You know, there you there is definitely a a price range here, right? So whichever whichever you've got, that's what that's what we're going to use. Okay, so we've got those. I'll put them there and them there, so I know what I'm using. Right, that'll do. I've got my little tester. I always think it's a good idea to have a bit of a tester on the side, so I can try things out here. I'm a lefty. Keep everything over here. Test it over here. Go to here. Hop, skip, jump. Hop, skip, jump. It just is good to do that. The only other thing I need is a, a sharpener, perhaps. And I was going to say as well, this is something that I wanted to point out. For those of you who are not that f fond of colouring in, do you remember when we, we inked it up and transferred it onto parchment? See? So you can get designer parchment. And then with a rubber, with an eraser, look, didn't that come out lovely? You can, you can get some really lovely contrast by turning over one of the sections, one of the sessions that we had, we did this, didn't we? Or I showed you, see? And then if you want to put some highlights in, see, you take the white eraser, you work on the back, not on the side that you doodled on, and then you can take colour out. It's pretty cool, look. See, and you can use the white eraser to get total whiteness, or the red eraser, let me make sure it's not dirty, to get a bit more, it's a bit more subtle, so you get more of a not complete whiteness, yeah? So that's quite nice too. See, this takes out a little bit of the colour, but so it's lovely for shading like that. Let me come in closer so you can see that. But this is a really lovely way to, there you go, see? So you doodle it on that side. If I used the white on here, I'd rub out the black, see? Which is good to know too, because it means that if you make a Horlicks of it, you don't waste your pen or your, your lovely designer paper or parchment. Just rub it out. Okay, so, but I digress. Um, Let's have a look at this. Let's, we're going to do this now. Are we cool? Just put all this together and then we'll have a little go at colouring. So, you know, I just want to make sure that I haven't got, it's got to be, this is, I thought we'd start here and then we'll We'll do something else. So, um, when I say do something else, did you doodle? Did you do? Did you do any doodles on your on your horses? <laughs> if anybody were listening and couldn't actually see what we were doing, they think we'd lost the plot. Um, but we can always do that section by section as we go along. But let's have a look. I wanted to make it look old, if you know what I mean. Not, uh, yeah. I wanted to sort of age it a little bit and, and and so with a little bit of high light and low light it works quite well. Can you see that okay? Right let's have a look. I'm going to start, let's go with the, the orangey one. Let's just lay down a layer of the orange. The, um, yeah or the light colour, whichever one is your light colour and let's just put down a layer just lightly like this. There you go. Just do that. So I don't want to spend a, I don't want to spend too long. I mean, this could be, you know, this could take as, 
months to do this. If we, if we, um, if we get too anal about the colouring in, so we could just. I'm not saying rush. I'm saying let's not get caught up in the minute eye because in the end, it will be the overall impression. What we're going to do though, is um, course, straight away you just relaxes you. What we're going to do is um, tackle one section at a time. And I thought we'd get our eye in first of all on the on the tent on the marquee, and we'll work out our colouring and our shading. On the marquee, you see? So light feathery strokes. There we go. Don't want to press too hard, regardless of which pencils you're using, whether you're using the pergoliners or the polychromos. You want to build up the layers. They work in layers, don't they? Isn't it lovely that we're able to. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. You know what's really cool about this is that this is our artwork. What you're colouring in. Are you doodling? Are you doing this with me? But isn't it great that what you're doing is your artwork? You know, think about that. That's quite something, you know. Now let's go with the red. We want the lighter red now. Yeah, the lighter red. So I want to lay down a layer of that as well, the orange, so I can see what I'm doing with it. Right, and now I've got the lighter red. So to get the lighter colour, so it's not too dark, what you're going to do is use the side of your pencil. Rather than that, really, t you know, that makes it dark. Hold it further down the shaft and use the side of the pencil and you'll see automatically that you get a really lovely shade. And then I'm using the other hand just to control where I go. So we're just laying down a a light colour of the red. I mean this, if anything, if nothing else, it tells you which which pleat is which colour, really. Now how much time we spend on this is entirely up to the individual, isn't it? Hey, It is. See, I when I colour in, when I colour in, I I do it, I spend ages. And the reason for that is because I'm doing it for the for the doing of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I'm doing it for the doing of it. I'm doing it for the mindful process, the actual activity. And I don't mind, personally, you see, I don't mind if this takes me six months to do. It's like an embroidery for me. Um, because what I'm doing is I'm learning as I'm going. I'm not even particularly worried or interested in the end result. Um, it's not my, my driver is not the finished product. It's not a product to me. It's a vehicle. I've said that many times while we've been doodling and working together in the shack. And and most of the art that I do is a, is a vehicle. It's just a, it's, it's a way to learn different tricks and tips. It's a way to, see I'm just putting another little colour over the top now, just gently though, but you see how I'm holding the pencil further up now? For me, and I can only speak for myself. I'm not too... I'm not focusing on the end result. I'm focusing on what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Yeah. And that's how it becomes a mindful process because I'm really focusing on what I'm doing. I mean, obviously, because I'm talking and hanging out with you at the same time, and, and I'm aware that I don't want to bore you 
I can't spend an hour fiddling around with one little section because that would become monotonous for a, for a lot of people watching. Um, but I probably would if I were on my own. What I'm doing here is I'm just putting a couple of little pleats in really. See, like it's flapping in the wind if you like. So I'm just adding a little bit of depth. Still using that light red though. See, that's the thing with these pencils. You, you build up layers. See, you can you can make a really good sort of circus top with this, couldn't you? See the pr oh, that's it. The neighbour's out again. Irritator. I'm going to have to shut the window. <laughs> well, we all know what I think about this neighbour. What's that? Is that a... Oh, it's a leaf blower. Of course it is. Why do something by hand when you can do it with an electric? Just let me shut the window. God. Honestly. <laughs> and there are times when I just wish I lived in the middle of a field. Okay. Right, where were we before Larry got his leaf blower out? <laughs> I'm going to go with the darker colour now, the darker red. So in the Pergoliners one, you've got the number 13, haven't you? It's like a brownie. Yeah, it's really nice, actually. It's not dissimilar to the... When you press harder. See, they're very similar, aren't they? In fact, I quite like that one. So you pick which one you're going with. And then what we'll do is... We'll add a bit of shadow on one side. Let's stick with the red for the minute. Right, let's just add a little bit of depth along that edge and in that top piece there. Right, sweep down. There you go. Are you working along with me? Are you do, do stop going over the line, Gray. Are you hanging out in the garden today? If you've got a garden. Can't assume that everybody's got a garden. Okay. Well, what are you doing? Have you got visitors? Are you hanging out? Are you enjoying your own company? Hmm? See, that looks quite good. Let's get that. Just that shadow down there. You see, you build it up, don't you? But we're leaving lighter bits. Can you see this all right? Paul, could you just tell me if I need to come in a bit closer? Or is that good enough? Right. That works. Let's do all of it at the same time. And then we haven't got to keep coming back, have we? If we do the whole thing. See, because my problem now is, how did I make them look that colour? And now I've got to get all the others... Otherwise, it looks like they ran out of fabric. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so what are you up to this weekend? What have you been up to? And what are you doing on this lovely holiday, this this bank holiday Monday? Hmm? Anything? I was in the garden yesterday. And I um and I took a piece of clay out there and I just I just sat on my own and um and sculpted some clay, you know. I enjoyed it. In the shade, a bit too warm it was in the sun, believe it or not. But I enjoy my own company in that regard. I could I could I could craft on my own for hours. What about you? I need a bit of red in that one. Do you like your own company when you're crafting? This looks good. Okay, so done that bit. Hey, okay. what do I think? 
Have you got a blending? No, let's not use that yet. Let's go to a grey now. Let's see if we add a bit of grey. Which one am I using? Any grey will do. Grey four, warm grey four. Let's just get some grey in to get some shadow in. We'll put a bit of grey and a bit of white in now. Let's have a look. So again, the grey is going in along that edge there, just to give that feeling of depth. That works. Yeah, let's just drop a little bit of grey up there. It doesn't only give you shadow. What it does is it kind of dirties up the, if you know what I mean, it ages or, yeah. There you go. Don't press too hard, though. You know, it, the other thing, of course, is with these polychromos and if you don't like what you're doing, if you, if you get to the end, you think, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure about that. Um, I think I overcooked it. Then you just take your rubber, our biggest selling item <laughs> on our website, <laughs> take the pink rubber and the pink rubber will remove, it takes out the colour. Look. See? You can just lift it off again. So you don't have to, you're not stuck with what you've done and then. I think also, like going going to the like with the kiln and and the pottery. I, I I don't know if you read my blog, but uh, I I loaded the kiln and it's it's been days of work, uh, in in the evenings as well, and I um a bit dark red. I uh, so I've loaded this kiln and I've glazed and I've put I've tried all different new things and I don't know what's going to happen. I've, I used some oxide washes that I've never tried before and different glazes and mixed a few of my own and um, we'll shall see. That's why I was a little bit apprehensive when, when I went in the garage this morning and it smelled. <laughs> I thought, oh no, what's happened in there? Because that's the thing, you can't see and you can't... Right, I've got some white now. i can try a bit of white just to tone this down. Let's get the white in now. Yeah, that makes it... Look more like that one there. Let's get a bit of white going in the areas where. And if you go over, see, if you go over the black line art, it doesn't matter at all because you can always go back in if you if you feel the need. You can always go in and and re-establish the black. Just going back over the top. Um, yeah, so it's been it's quite a learning curve this one for me. And I blogged about it yesterday. I, I've kind of, I shut that door, flicked the switch, and then I thought, right, well, it's out of my hands now. I shall soon find out whether I did it right or I did it wrong. Or Big learning curve, you know. If, it, if some things blow, uh, I, I, I will know why. Because as I was doing it, I was thinking, oh, I'm not sure this is going to work. Um, you know, did I wait long enough? Was it dry enough? Did I use the right amount of oxide wash? If it doesn't show, then clearly no. <laughs> but the, the thing is, and this is, again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about not, um, not being too concerned about the end result. You see, I'm not worried about this. I, I, I'm learning as I'm doing this. I'm thinking, all oh, right, well, so that's how you get more white. That's how you leave a little bit more of this paper exposed and then the white just drops in on the sides of the red. You see? Um, and I think it is a lot, a lot of... Because I'm not doing it for anybody in particular. See, same as the, the pottery... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not commissioned to do anything. I'm, it's just me, you know. I'm still. Le I'm learning, learning, learning. And so there's no. There's no performance. You know. I haven't got to. One of the ladies at pottery the other day. She's really lovely, and she sells her work. See, I don't. I don't sell my work. I've got enough on my plate without starting that little business on the side. And then. Uh, and she, she's obviously, she made these really nice candle holders. 
They were lovely, I thought. Um, but when she saw them, she was really panicking and worried and distressed because she'd already sold them. Right, here's the thing. She sold them off the back of another pair or another three candlesticks. Now, the, the three that she... So they'd been ordered off the back of something else, but they hadn't come out the same. So now she was panicking because she thought, will the lady like them? They're not the same as the ones that she thinks she's getting. They're obviously similar, but not the same. And that's the thing about this stuff. You know, especially pottery, you can't guarantee that it's always going to come out the same. Not unless you're into real mass production, you know. And, um, and I just watched her the whole afternoon on Wednesday. She was... Uh, really worried about it, you know. And I thought that takes the joy out of it when you're when you're having to make to order like that, especially with something unpredictable like art, you know. And I thought, no, I don't want to get into that arena, really. You know, I I enjoy the process, and that's why. I've already said I've waved farewell to that lot in the in the in the kiln. My only thing is if if it if they all melt and they're just a big puddle on the on the shelves, I should be frustrated because the shelves <laughs> I need the shelves. But then again, I'm sure I can replace the shelves as well. More will be revealed. So this looks quite good. I'm going to leave the red now because I think I've done enough of the red. Let's go back to the orange, shall we? And I think, yeah, let's do a bit of orange. Let's do a bit. Is that the right one? Yeah. Which is this one? See, that, uh, that Faber Castor, um, Perga liner one's rather nice too. Let's use this one. Okay. Let's get a bit of yellow or orange going down here. Which one am I using? I hear you ask. <clears throat> Dark chrome yellow, 109. It's an orangey-yellow, and I'm just putting some depth around the edge here. And I'm avoiding this area because I want to put a bit of white in there, see? Yeah, so it's, I guess... You, you know, as a, as, a, as a crafter or an artist or which is what we are, right? Don't be, don't be afraid to call yourself an artist. If you're doing this, you are an artist, okay? And um, I think the problem with a lot of us crafters, as we call ourselves, this is me, this is me just thinking out loud now, okay? And it's, my, it's just my opinion. Um, it's, not, it's not gospel, it's just what I think, okay? But I think that a lot of us crafters, we're such perfectionists. And we don't feel that we qualify as artists because we think that artists must have studied it. They must be, you know, they're not, we're not talented like that. And so we call ourselves crafters. It's like a, it's like B team. It's like the second division or something, you know, um, which is an absolute load of cock really. And, um, but it's safe, isn't it? And when you're a perfectionist, let's take a bit of white. Where's that lovely white one? When you're a perfectionist, then if it's not perfect, it's rubbish, isn't it? I used to be like that. I still got it. I have to, I have to, I had to work at not being like that because it was crippling me. You know, just put a bit of white in there. Make the artwork come to you as well. You know, turn it round. What's that other white? There you go. Um, and you do, you, 
you're always, ju- I'm not saying you now, one, one is always judging oneself, you know, and we're so self-deprecating, we're so anti what, you know, <laughs> critical of what we do, so self-critical. And the perfectionist in us, it's, it can be really debilitating, can't it? Quite a long word for a Monday morning, Gray. <laughs> there you go. I, I have to work at this perfectionism thing. I really do. But I'm getting better at it. Life's too blimmin' short to keep thinking that if it's not perfect, it's rubbish. Because there are an awful lot of difference. There's a big, 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 big distance between perfect, whatever that is, and then everything else, you know? <laughs> and, and the thing is, if you, if you criticise, if you're so self-critical, and the, in the end you just won't do it, you won't even pick the pencil up because you will have convinced yourself you're rubbish. And you know what, you, it's, you, I remember Mark years ago, my son, he was trying to ride his bike and he kept falling off. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. I said, well, you know what, Mark, whether you can or you can't is what you believe. Whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, either way, you're probably right, you know. And if you keep convincing yourself that you can't do it, chances are you will keep falling off. Anyway, we had this big fight in the field on his bike, and then, and then I left him to it. And it's, it must have stuck with him because he still talks about it now. And I can remember him a couple of hours later, don't know how many times he fell off. I went in the house, I thought, get on with it. And, uh, and I said to him, it's not my job to teach you to ride your bike, it's your job to learn how to ride the bike. And a couple of hours later, I remember he was outside the window. Look, ma'am, look, ma'am, watch, watch, watch. And he was, you know, he was off and running. And, and um, and yeah, I was a hard, I was hard on him, uh, b- but he learnt it. You know, if I if I'd bought into his not being able to do it, then we would have just been feeding that negativity more and more energy. You know, as it was, he worked it out, and I think that's the thing with. I know I was a bad mum, um, but that's the thing with this, with this craft art enigma. You know, and I remember Elizabeth. She said, "Lovely Elizabeth from Barming, who's very, very heavily disabled and handicapped, but she does, she does groovy. You know, really lovely as well." And I remember she said, "The more you do, the better you get, and the better you get, the more you want to do." Boom. And therein lies the secret. I'm going to take a darker orange now. Do I want to do that? No, it looks too carnivally. Let's go with a grey. That will tone it down a bit. Yeah. The more you do, the better you get. And the better you get, the more you want to do. Ain't that the truth? Here we go, look. I love this. And I know we've talked about this before, you know, the perfectionism and how crippling it can be because you just think, I'm rubbish, it's rubbish, I'm rubbish. That's the kind of thing, isn't it? It's rubbish, I'm rubbish, it's rubbish, I'm rubbish. And it's like, well, no, first of all, it's not rubbish. And secondly, you're certainly not rubbish. <laughs> Where did, who told you that? Do you see? Let's just get some of that grey in over the top. Doesn't that look good now? Hey, let's have a look, see? Just going to tuck in a little bit of that grey. And there's no race, and there's no performance, and there are no judges. And you know, if you don't like what you've done, then this would be the best two ninety nine you've ever spent. <laughs> I don't know, it might be three ninety nine. I don't know, but it's a, wear, a worthy investment, I'm telling you. Let's get some of that grey in there. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I don't know where all that came from today. I woke up, I woke up beating myself up this morning, as you do, 
<laughs> yeah, God knows where it comes from. So, so that little chat was more for me than anybody really. Physician, heal thyself, and all that. There, don't make it too dirty. Doesn't that look good? I think so. Now, of course, once you've decided you've done enough colouring, then we can go back in with the black and add a little bit of doodle detail. Doodle detail. Hey. Here we go. Just add a little bit of shade up there. Just over the top. That's nice. Hmm. Yeah. And so what we're doing here, primarily, is to add a little flash of orange. I'm pressing quite hard now. There you go. It's going to look good. What we're doing here, primarily, is hanging out together. And we're using a few colouring pencils. Doesn't that look good now? Cool. I'm looking forward to doing these as well. What colours though? Oh. See how I've, let's have a look on this camera. Let's see if, see what I've done on the tips of those. See the tips? I went in and added a little bit of inking. Yeah? See, I did the same thing down there. Where's that other? I went in there and did a little bit on there. Oh yeah, look at, check out the... The blanket, the blanket on the horse. <laughs> I don't think he'd thank me for calling it a blanket. Let's have a look. Right, camera's good, Paul says. Have you got these? These are good. These little art pens. Let's take them. Um, I'm using the very thinnest one here. Let's go back to the overhead, shall we? Don't you find this relaxing? I find it so relaxing. Now, why would I want to go out shopping if I could hang out with you guys? I don't know. I don't think I'm alone. I was talking to Linda yesterday, Linda Williams. We had a little chat. And um, she's the same as me. She says, I don't feel inclined to go out. I said, no, no, do I, Linda. So you've got to decide now. You don't want to do any more grey. You don't want to do any more pencil. Once you've had enough, I mean, I could spend, I could spend the whole day fiddling with this. But there's got to be a point where you go, that'll do. You know, there's wholesome and then there's ridiculous. Okay. So, but it's what it's whatever you want to do. I'm going to put a little dot in there, and then I'm going to travel up like that. Like so, turn the artwork to. And then I'm going to come into this fold here, travel up, and in we go. Dot down there gives me a place to go to, and then follow the road ahead. I wonder if people only knew, hey, how, how therapeutic and how good for you art and drawing and colouring is and stamping and basically just staying with your hands it's like pottery all I'm doing is just focused on what I'm doing and because it's something new very very new for me really I'm really really concentrating it's got so much to learn and that's a science, isn't it? Pottery. When you get to the glazes, that's why I've been avoiding it, really, because it sounded a little bit too technical for my taste. But what was happening with me was I was building, 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 throwing, 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 turning, 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 bisque firing, bisque firing, bisque firing. Then I ended up, it's like I've got a little stash, like a ridiculous, little is the wrong word here. I've got a stash of unglazed stuff that you could open a shop with. And I thought, well, I mean, I've been enjoying that process, so you see. 
so I haven't bothered with the other, the finishing bit. And so this weekend I set myself the task or the, the exercise or the of finishing because there's got to be something to there's got to be some sort of project completion really isn't there and it really isn't so much and this is the same really with art it isn't even so much that i'm worried about the end result it's not the game it's the learning curve that's what i'm interested in is how to how to do things and how to get an effect you know do you, do you, do you get what i mean oh it's great if it does turn out nice sure of course it is but it's not for sale i'm not selling it if it's particularly nice i'll give it away you know I'll give it, I'll gift it to somebody. But it's, it's not crucial, you know. And, um, yeah, and watching my friend in the pottery class last week, panicking about these candlesticks, I thought, yeah. And that's why I'm not so, you know, I don't want to get into that. It's, it's it's exacting enough or it's strenuous enough, um, you know, doing shopping television and, you know, that's, that's, that's stressy, that's stressy. It's, it's uh, nerve wracking for me, you know, it always has been, doesn't matter how many years you do it, I find it very nerve wracking every time. So I'm certainly not going to start. I won't say never, because you should never say never. You never know what's around the corner. Never, ever. <laughs> you know? But I do it for the joy of doing it. Same as I wouldn't write a book. I, I don't want to write a book because I don't want anyone to read it yet. <laughs> Everyone says, oh, you should write a book. Yeah, but... <sighs> Why would I write a book if I don't want anyone to read it? <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? This one looks a bit insipid. I should have done this a bit earlier, but hey ho. There. I like that. Do you like that? I'm going to go with a darker grey now. Just put the finishing depths in here on this edge here. Now I wonder. If we did a bit of patchy like along there and then up there like that, a bit of patchy. Now on the light one, got to go a little bit lighter because it'll be too dark otherwise. Hmm, I love this. There we go. Yeah. So if you are one of those people who, who hasn't even started yet because you have assumed that you can't do it, then, you know, I'm asking you to reconsider. I'm asking you to reconsider that. If somebody had said to me five years ago or four years ago or even three years ago, you are going to fall in love with pottery. Pottery is going to be your absolute joy. I would have laughed at them because I, I watched the throw down and thought, oh, I can never do that. Never. Fascinating, but I could never do it. Ooh. And actually, I can. See? I can. And the more I do, the better I get. And the better I get, the more I want to do. 
there we are. Isn't that great though? You know? And whether you do groovy or whether you doodle, just do it. JFDI, just do it. You know? There. Enough titivating grey? That'll do. Now, let's have a look. I think the next thing we want to do, I think the, the flags, I mean, this is going to take forever, isn't it? How long we got? <laughs> Shall I do, uh, see, I really fancy doing the little people. I've just got this thing. That I want to do these people, but I have got to decide. I've got to decide what color I want to make their outfits. So I think I'm going to start with just, I don't want to make them all orange and red. That would look too weird. But I reckon that the girls, the ladies, I'm going to keep it tone in tone, you know, only because it's a piece of artwork. So I don't want to go reds and oranges and greens and, you know, well, actually red, orange and green doesn't sound so awful, but I don't want to start injecting blue into it. I want to kind of, if I keep it in the sort of tone family, I reckon that'll look good. I'm going to put there a bit of white in their um, headdresses. And then like the king, the king and the queen, they're key here. So we're going to put the colour in. Come on, we can do this. This won't take long. So I've got the king and the queen and... Uh, Put a little bit of white in her crown and a little bit of, so I'm just adding a little bit of white in the hats and the headdresses just to lighten it up a bit. I can always add a bit of colour after. Yeah, this is going to look really cool. Bit of highlight and on this cloak and the queen's dress. White's good on buff, isn't it? We we know that. See, I like this look. It's like a white party. <laughs> Not at all. We'll add some colour in a minute. But I think we'll add a bit of white first. Get the white in and then we'll work around it. Because we've got gold as well, you see. We could add a bit of gold. I was thinking. See, I tried a bit here. Looks so cool. Look, check it out. I only tried a little tiny bit because I didn't want to get, I didn't want to leave you behind. But you see where the horse is? See the gold? And I thought, yeah. So that's going to, but that's got to be right at the end. I think the, the, um, the gold touches are going to go right at the end. So we, we, we've got to know ahead of time that we're going to do a little bit of that. And if we do a bit of gold, like say on his crown, I mean, I'll, I don't want to do it because then when I've done it, but say you do you do the gold and you knock out the black lines, right? Once the gold is dry, then you just go back in and reintroduce it. So that's easy. Now let's go with a little bit of red. Let's do a bit of red. So I think... I'm going to try a little bit of red on her dress there. Just add a little bit of red, like so. See, now if we add a bit of white over the top, that will be more pink. It won't be so... There you go, see? Changes it completely. Changes it completely with a bit of white over the top. Nice. So... Just bounce between the white and the red. There you go. She looks pretty now. And so you just work your way along, really, and get a good balance. Now, I think that he in the background there, where's that last green? I'm gonna, I, I think he would be wearing, he looks like a huntsman. Let's try a bit of the green, just to try a bit of contrast, so that they're not all red, and otherwise it looked like a, a weird... Entourage, wouldn't it? The king decreed you've all got to wear the same colour. <laughs> Our uniform. Right, let's get some of that green. He's wearing that darker colour. This looks nice. 
So what you're going to do now is get a bit of balance going in the picture. So then all the green part is at this end, you see. And the, the white over the top, use the white pencil almost as a blending pencil. And that's the other thing we haven't done is use the blender. That'll look good as well. And have at the back of your mind, if you've got one of these pens, you've got two things going on here, right, which are where I think, I hope we've got them now, I'm chatting about them. A fine line gold and a fine line white. Mm -hmm. And they, them combined with the black micron pen, that's when we'll go in and do all the detail afterwards. So for example, the, the, the white pen, let me just show you. See, I was thinking, because the white pen, you can do this on Wednesday or maybe even next week, right? Because it's tricks and tips, isn't it? But you see, if you take the white pen, for example, like that, there's a, there's a really, really, really fine, what you need is a really fine brush. And the brush can, we've got these, these are um, the pergoline, and number two, the thinnest brush you could possibly imagine. But you can, you can spread the white out really in a very controlled way with a brush. See? So that's worth bearing in mind because sometimes I was looking at this, I was trying this, I thought, well, how am I going to get the white into those little leaves? So what you do is, you see, you put a little dot of white so, so and so it doesn't look so blobby. Once you've put the white in, then you take your pen, your paintbrush, sorry, your number two, and then you can literally, you can, it's like a hair. I mean, I know. Did I say, what was I saying about perfectionism? But it looks so nice when you do it. And it goes right back to what I was saying. It was, it goes right back to what I was saying about getting involved in the process. It's, it's that, it's the attention to detail. Um, it's not so much, oh, I just got to make sure that the hairs don't, catch when I put the little lid on. Um, it's not the perfectionism, it's the learning how to do that. Once I've learnt it, that's fine then. I don't even have to do it all the way through. I'll do it till I get bored with it, you see? So, yeah, I, I hope that what I'm waffling on about makes sense. Um, and then when we get together on Wednesday, I, I'm going to, I might crack on a little bit and do a little bit more with the with the clothes, I, I'm right into the, this. is nice. That's a nice green. That's the pergolina one. I think I'm going to colour these in. But if you don't have time, don't worry. It's not a problem. We can always do it together at a later date, can't we? It's no worry, is it? There, actually, that looks really cool. <laughs> cool, he looks he looks really dapper now in his green. <laughs> Let's have a look up close. So if you get time and you're not sure what to do, then why don't you just dress the party? Dress the party. Bit of orange, bit of green, bit of brown, bit of red, black and white, yeah, bit of grey. See what you can come up with. And then on Wednesday. We'll have another look. And in the meantime, I'm doing my research on family crests. So it might not be this week. It might be next week. You know, I'm not in a rush. And I'm, I, I think it's, again, it's that vehicle thing. You know, it's the vehicle. We're in Camelot and we're learning all about different parts of it. So it's lovely. And I'm going to call it there. What is it? We've got thick and thin white, but only thick gold. Ah, pity. Yeah, we're, we're waiting on a lot of things, aren't we? But maybe loads of you already got these when we did have them. Anyway, that's all right then. Now we know. Um, be safe. Enjoy your, enjoy your Bank Holiday Monday or your Memorial Day. Do you know where Grace is? Honest to kids, right? Yesterday she was sending me some photographs because, of course, Grace lives in New York. And uh, they've got a long weekend off as well. And I was looking at these photographs and I thought, oh, that's a lot of water. I said, are you, is that 
at Niagara? She said, yep, my daughter is at Niagara Falls. I mean, I ask you, I'm so glad for her. You know, I've never been to Niagara, but it was just so, I thought, isn't that wonderful? You know, isn't that a wonderful opportunity for her? Yeah, she was at Niagara. <laughs> now the other half lives, eh? Anyway, on that amazing note, I'll love you and leave you. And I don't forget tomorrow, Paul, groovy, groovy Tuesday. He's on at 10 o'clock. And big news, if they can get the electrics sorted out, Linda Williams will be joining him. So that was what we were speaking about yesterday. I hope that it all pans out. She's prepping away and she's going to come to the party and uh, Paul and her are going to hang out together with you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning if they can sort the electric out. <laughs> Lots of love. Have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine. Get out in the garden. Sit under an umbrella. Go and do some colouring in. Lots of love. I'll see you soon. In fact, I'll see you on Wednesday morning. Bye-bye now.